Hi everybody, let's in this video cover aggregate supply. By the end, we'll be able to put aggregate supply and aggregate demand together to get macro equilibrium. The next video in this playlist covers that topic area. Unfortunately, aggregate supply is quite a heavy and complex topic area because it's heavily disputed in the economics world. You've got Keynesian economists with their own interpretation of aggregate supply. You've got classical economists with their own interpretation of aggregate supply. Neither school is right, neither school is wrong. So it's totally up to you uh, to use whichever aggregate supply interpretation you want to use. It's not going to be wrong. Use whatever you're comfortable with. But what you need to know is why they differ and what aggregate supply looks like in both the different models here. Let's get straight into the classical interpretation. In the classical model, you can have short-run aggregate supply and long-run aggregate supply. Short-run aggregate supply looks like this, upward sloping. The position of short-run aggregate supply is determined by costs of production in the economy. If costs of production change, the short-run aggregate supply will shift. If there is an increase in cost of production, SRS will shift to the left. If there is a decrease in cost of production, SRS will shift to the right. Now, we're talking about costs of production that can affect all firms in the economy. So we're not just talking on a micro level, this is clearly a macro level. What costs of production can change that will affect all firms in the economy? Well, wages, for example. If wages throughout the economy go up, then that is going to increase costs of production for firms in the economy. SRS will shift to the left from SRS1 to SRS3 here. If wages decrease, that's going to reduce costs of production for firms in the economy, shifting SRS to the right. If raw material or commodity prices go up, then costs of production will rise for firms in the economy, uh, shifting SRS to the left. If they fall, then SRS will shift to the right because there is a decrease in cost of production for firms in the economy. Oil is a major cost of production, so it's, it's okay for the UK economy, for example, to keep the oil price as a separate uh, cost of production factor, even though it should really fall into this category. Oil is such an important input for all firms in the UK economy, whether it's for transportation of their goods, whether it's to access goods themselves, whether it's an actual input in their actual production. Oil price is so important. When the oil price goes up, costs of production for all firms in the economy will increase, thus shifting SRS to the left, whereas if the oil price decreases, that will reduce costs of production, shifting SRS to the right. Business taxes like VAT clearly impact costs of production. If VAT goes up, that will increase costs of production. If VAT goes down, that will reduce costs of production for all firms in the economy, shifting SRS whichever way. Don't forget import prices. Import prices is massive, especially for firms in the UK economy that rely on imports of raw materials, of commodities, in order to produce. And import prices can change when the exchange rate changes. So when there is a strong exchange rate, imports are cheaper. That means for firms who import raw materials, who import commodities, they will see a big drop in their cost of production, where SRS will shift to the right. Whereas when there is a weak exchange rate, import prices become much more expensive. So for firms who import raw materials and commodities, their cost of production will increase, shifting SRS to the left. So I've said Spiced and Widek, remember these memory devices, where Spiced is uh, for a strong exchange rate and Widek is for a weak exchange rate. Strong pound imports cheap exports dear. So imports cheap, weak pound or weak currency imports dear. So there's the link to import prices and there's the link to SRS and cost of production. Another good thing to keep in your mind, yes, cost of production, a great way to simplify this, but just think shocks. When SRAS shifts, there is a supply side shock in the economy because this shift can happen very quickly. These are all very quick, potentially even overnight factors that can shift SRAS. So these are shocks to the economy. They can be positive. If SRAS shifts to the right, we have a fall in cost of production, a positive supply side shock. They could also be negative when SRS shifts to the left and we see negative growth when we put AD on our diagram, higher inflation too. That's a negative supply side shock which can lead to a phenomenon called stagflation. So learn them also as supply side shocks. They can quickly shock the economy um, on the supply side here. What about the classical interpretation of LRAS? Well in the classical model, LRAS is vertical to represent one level of output the economy will always produce at in the long run. And that level of output is YFE. Let's define YFE now. YFE is the full employment level of output and it represents the maximum level of output an economy can produce using all factors of production at sustainable levels. Now that 
end part is really important, sustainable levels, which means it is possible to deviate from that, even to increase output beyond YFE, if we're using factors of production unsustainably. So for example, if we're using labour over time, too much overtime work going on, eventually labour will burn out, unsustainable production. If we're using capital over time, right, so machinery is being used 24-7, eventually that machinery will break down, unsustainable production. So YFE, the maximum level of output an economy can produce using all factors of production at sustainable levels. Classical economists believe that it's only one level of output, which is why the long-run aggregate supply curve is vertical, because according to classical economists, we are always going to be there in the long run, this one level of output, and RAS reflects that output position. When the economy is at the natural rate of unemployment, that's when we are at the full employment level of output. So that's how we can measure whether we are here or not. In the UK, for example, the natural rate of unemployment is 4.5%. I know it's a bit disputed, but many economists will agree. It's at 4.5% unemployment. When we are there, then economists agree that we are fully employing all of our factors of production, all of our resources in the economy. Therefore, we must be at the full employment level of output. How can this curve shift left or right? Well, let's take an LRAS shift to the right. Really simplify this, guys, to avoid confusion. Many students will make lots of errors when they try and explain why LRAS shifts to the right. Simplify it by using this memory device. The quantity and the quality of our factors of production. I say Q squared of cell. Quantity and quality of capital, enterprise, land and labour. If the quantity and or the quality of our factors of production are increasing and improving, then LRAS can shift to the right. Also, there might be an improvement in the productive efficiency of the economy. So no change in our factors of production, but there is an improvement in productive efficiency. Learn this as a fall in long-run costs of production. None of these long-run costs of production are falling, and that will remain the case for a long period of time. Thus, the productive efficiency of the economy is improving. So three ways in which LRS can shift to the right. An increase in the quantity of our factors of production, an increase in the quality of our factors of production, and an improvement in the productive efficiency of the economy there. Okay, if that happens, LRAS will shift to the right from LRAS1 to LRAS2, and potentially the economy can produce more from YFE1 to YFE2. What factors could cause that? So for example, labour productivity improving, that will increase the quality of labour that's shifting LRAS to the right. It could be an increase in investment throughout the economy. Remember what investment is, guys. It's when firms spend money on capital goods, a big tip for you in your essays is to always give examples of investment whenever you talk about it. So it could be, for example, technology advances, research and development spending, new factory development, um, it could be uh, new machines being bought in, it could be machine upgrades, new software, it could be a fleet of new vehicles being bought, whatever. Just make sure you give examples, which is clearly when firms are spending money on capital goods. Now, clearly, that's going to increase the quantity of capital, it could increase the quality of capital, and over time, it could improve the productive efficiency of the economy as long-run costs of production for firms decrease. Thus, LRAS can shift for all three ways there. Infrastructure improvements are so important. Let's take transport infrastructure. So, for example, building new roads, upgrading roads, building new airports, new runways, new railway lines, bridges. Transport infrastructure will reduce long-run costs for all businesses in the economy because it means that transporting goods and services uh, becomes quicker, becomes cheaper, becomes more efficient. Um, therefore, the long run cost of production for firms decrease, improving the productive efficiency of the economy, shifting LRAS to the right. Another way to look at infrastructure improvements, for example, new, I don't know, pipe infrastructure, maybe it's electricity pylons, maybe it is transport infrastructure, you can argue that the quantity and quality of the capital stock in the economy improves, thus shifting LRAS to the right as well. Even if it's new schools and new hospitals being built, that's an increase in the quantity of capital. You can shift LRAS to the right as a result. So infrastructure, we can go to productive efficiency with transport infrastructure, we can go to the quantity of the capital stock and the quality of the capital stock as well to shift LRAS to the right. We can look at increases in the quantity of labour. So maybe this is immigration. So migrants coming into the country of a working age will increase the size of the labour force. When we say quantity of labour, it's the size of the labour force that we're talking about. Not the unemployed becoming employed, because the unemployed are also part of the labour force. It's increasing the size of the labour force. Right? So migrants coming in of a working age, maybe it's incentives. 
like reducing benefits, like cutting income tax, for example, where the inactive become active, increasing the quantity of labour. We can look at competition. Competition is massive for productive efficiency improvements. So maybe it's privatisation, maybe it's deregulation, maybe it's trade liberalisation, maybe it's competition policy generally. If competition improves throughout the economy, then firms are going to be looking to reduce their costs as much as possible to stay competitive, to beat their rivals. And that is going to increase productive efficiency throughout the economy and shift LRAS to the right. We can also look at new resource discovery. So this comes under the land category. If we find new resources, that's the quantity of land increasing, thus shifting LRAS to the right. What about LRAS shifting to the left in the economy? Well, that could happen if there is a big decrease in labour productivity in the economy. Uh, it could happen if there is mass capital depreciation, which shifts LRAS to the left. It could be war, conflict, a natural disaster, which destroys infrastructure, which reduces the quantity of capital. Um, it could be these three things, which leads to, to death, which reduces the quantity of labour. Uh, it could be a pandemic, so a health crisis in the economy, which severely affects the productivity of labour. If that causes death, that can decrease the quantity of labour. It could be hysteresis. Remember that hysteresis um, is a phenomenon caused by long-term unemployment, where eventually workers become discouraged and they drop out of the labour force, reducing the quantity of labour. It could be emigration from the uh, economy. So when uh, labour of a working age, the so workers of a working age, actually leave the economy, and that reduces the quantity of labour. So all of these factors can shift LRAS to the left. What about the Keynesian interpretation then? Keynesians do not dispute at all the reasons why the LRS curve can shift to the right and to the left. So all the factors we've talked about, Keynesians 100% agree with. So shifting right, increasing potential output, shifting left, decreasing potential output. Absolutely fine, no disagreement there. The disagreement occurs over the shape of LRS and what LRS actually represents. So Keynesian economists totally dispute the idea of there being a short-run aggregate supply and a long-run aggregate supply. They say that's totally useless. There is a point where we reach full employment, where the curve becomes vertical, they believe. But they say that, look, you know, the economy can be producing less than YFE, and that could be a long-run level of output. There isn't just one long-run level of output that the economy will always be at. No way. If the economy is producing below YFE, that could be a long-run equilibrium in the economy. They also heavily dispute the shape, right? And they say that the shape is bendy looking like this due to the level of spare capacity in the economy. So for example, they say that if the economy is in deep recession, where output is way below full employment, they say that it's possible to increase production without there being any increase in inflationary pressure at all. And that is because there is mass unemployment of factors of production, unemployment of labor, unemployment of capital, unemployment of land. So to increase production from here to here, for example, it's very easy for firms to use up the excess labour, to use up the excess capital without having to pay more for them. So wages, for example, will not rise. Capital, for example, the price of it will not rise, which means that the inflation rate will remain constant uh, at times of deep recession when we increase production on the horizontal part of Keynesian LRAS. However, the closer we get to YFE, the more that we are using up our spare capacity, the more pressure is being put on our existing factors of production. So now labour is becoming scarcer. So to employ labour, wages will have to rise. Capital is becoming scarcer, so to employ capital, firms will have to pay more for that capital. That will increase their cost of production, they're going to pass that on via higher prices in the economy, and that will increase the inflation rate. Eventually to a point where we are fully utilising all of our factors of production, and it's not possible to increase output sustainably anymore. There will only be an increase in inflation, that's when the uh, Keynesian aggregate supply curve becomes vertical. But crucially, they believe that we are not always at YFE at all. We could be below YFE, and that could be a long-run equilibrium in the economy. So that covers aggregate supply in detail. Hopefully now you get it. The next video, we're going to look at macroequilibrium, where we put AD and AS together. Stay tuned for that. I'll see you all in that video.